you remember the first time like you really thought, you know, how bands are, they, they, you go, I guess, to an interim period where you're not sure if you're going to make it, you know, or you know, you're kind of in that, before you really kind of know that you're going to be accepted. Do you remember that moment? Do you remember kind of when you, the band discovered that, hey, we're going to do this, this is you know, maybe the first hit, or I don't know. We never really, I don't know if we thought about it really either way. If you really think you're going to make it, I mean, you're in for a big disappointment. And it's, it, I don't know what that means. Some people think that they made it if they've signed a record deal. That usually means it's all over. That means you'll never make any money. And we, we never were at that point. I don't think we've ever, we've never made it that big, really. You know, we were never sold millions and millions. We never were as big as even Hootie and the Blowfish or Guns N' Roses or the Spice Girls or any, you can name millions of acts that have sold millions of records. We never did that. I think the you know so we we've always been trying to uh, succeed. I, I really don't think we've made it. But you're a platinum selling artist. Yeah. Yeah. After twenty albums. Yeah. <laughs> add them all together. That was it after your trip to Budokan. That yeah, that sold a couple million. Mm -hmm. That's when yeah, and it yeah. kept you on the charts for a year. Yes, but we'd had I think four albums before that mm -hmm. that didn't sell anything. Probably they sold, but Trick Mania didn't. I mean, I mean, they actually, they, they lost as much money as we made oh, on Budokan to almost break even. Right. Not that it's all you do it for is money, but you right. do it to, to survive. And we just, I really think we haven't, we're kind of like a big cult group. We're an underground band. It's kind of like we're underdogs. We've never, re we made it for a little while, sort of. Mm -hmm. But we when we sold two million, two million albums, there were all these other groups like Boston and Frampton and Foreigner selling 10, 12, 15 million albums. Two million albums, it was like, it was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. That was nothing. Mm -hmm. So, never really did that well. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, as big success wise. So we've, I think that's why we kind of hung in there because we never really made it, in our opinion. Right, but I mean, others, uh, there's a whole generation of artists who would, you know, consider that you have made it, you have songs that have a lot of longevity, that have a lot of lasting appeal, that are still enjoyed and heard on radio and, you know... Um, well, that's somebody else yeah. looking at it, yes. Yeah. I so, suppose it looks as if right. we're doing great. Right. And, and, you know, in it, compared to a lot of things, we are. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question, but I think, guys, think that's what keeps us going. Yeah. Just one more. Yeah. Yeah. You guys write? Do you guys write as a collaborative like a group thing, or does one person start it off, do you jam it out, and then refine well, it? We will write different different ways. Sometimes we'll sit around together. That that's pretty rare. We usually just have um, individuals we'll come up with ideas, and then we'll say, hey, "I've got this," and Robin's got this, and Rick's got this, and what do you think? And we'll kind of bounce the individual ideas off of each other. So it's pretty rare we sit around all together and start out from scratch. We we'll sit around at home and think of ideas, and then kind of present them to everybody else. We're kind of being dragged. You are? Yeah. Well, no, you but are. We just act like yeah. we don't, yeah. we don't hear that.